Okay, we're gonna go over some basic utensils we use in the kitchen. Um, this is a meat mallet. It's to tenderize any proteins that you would like. Um, for like chicken parmigiana, you'll be able to pound the meat to tenderize it and then bread it to, and then cook it for it. So, or you can use it when you're butchering an item. Um, there's many uses for this. That's the meat mallet. This is the rolling pin. Um, they have rolling pins that don't have handles and then they have rolling pins with handles. So whichever one you prefer, I prefer the one without handles, it's because you have more control of the movement when you're rolling. Okay. This is a wooden spoon. Um, continuing with spoons, these are the metal spoons that we use in the kitchen um, for cooking. Um, not serving, we have special serving utensils for the front of the house. So this is a solid one, this is a perforated one, this is a V-slotted, and then this is a slotted spoon. So depending on what you need, sometimes when you're frying a few items, you wanna use one of these items. If um, you want to use it for family meal, or if you're trying to scoop something that you don't want the liquid, depending the size and shape, you'll be using one of these spoons. Okay, and then the wooden spoon is usually for cooking. If you are using a wooden spoon, obviously if you leave it on a pot with the flame coming up, it will leave these burn marks, as well as if you leave the spoon on the bottom of the pot, you'll leave these burn marks. So most of the time we use bamaries for utensils to make sure that we don't burn any of the utensils. Um, this is for the wok. You always have the scoop and you always have the spatula for the wok station. And if we do use the wok, it'll be for um, special occasions. Um, these are ladles. If you notice, the ladles have all different shapes and sizes. They go from small to big. So we have a two ounce, four ounce, six ounce, and an eight ounce. How we know these items is if you look at the ladle itself, um, you can't see it in the video, but when you grab the actual ladle, you'll see it engraved in it, telling you what size the ladle is. And most of the time, sauces are for the two ounces, and then the eight ounces are for the soups. Uh, these are rubber spatulas. A good showing of a rubber spatula is this one. You can tell that it has not been stained or cooked, and that the handle is still intact. Um, bad examples of a rubber spatula is this one was left in the pot for too long and these are not heat proof. They're heat resistant. They can go up to about 400 degrees or maybe a little bit more. And this means that it actually got cooked so hard that um, because, you leaving, le because leaving it in a pot created this cook on, on the um, rubber spatula. On the handles as well, you can see here in this one, if you notice, um, comparing it to the one that is not burnt, you have to take a lot of talent to get these burns, or as well, not care at all for those burns. So keep in mind, we keep utensils in bay marines and water during cooking times, and then when we're not using it to stir, and then all other times it goes into a bay marine. Uh, whisk, you have two types of whisk in the kitchen, wooden handle whisk and metal handle whisk. These are all types of spatulas. You have the fish spatula, which you can use to pan sear fish. You have the um, pastry spatula. Um, these two offset spatulas, as well as this one's an offset spatula. This one has a round top, depending on what you, is great for burgers. Um, this one has the square edges, which is also good for burgers, but we like to use this, this one for any of the crumbles because um, we use them to cut as well as serve. So for dessert station, this is a good item. And then we have our scoops. If you take a look at the scoops, we usually code all of them by color. And then if you don't know the color of it, and as well as like this one doesn't have a color, you'll know the size of them by the handle. So if you just push down, it'll tell you like this one is four ounces and this one is two ounces and it goes down. Um, so to always make sure you read your recipes for the color of the handle or the size of the scoop. 
And then um, this one is actually a 100 scoop. Um, and they also go by numbers too. So this one's a 40 and this one is 30, 24, and it goes on and on. Okay, those are scoops. Um, for tongs, uh, these two tongs, this one, this large one, and this little one is great for the kitchen. And they are for the kitchen tongs. We don't use these to serve in the front of the house. They have special front of the house tongs for that. Um, if you use the big one, which most people do because they're very scared of the grill, it's actually harder because you have to use more muscle strength to close the long tongs. If you use this one, it doesn't use as much strength, which is easier for the medium-sized tongs. But if you're afraid of the flame or you have to grab something far, of course you would have to use the longer ones. These are bar, like front of the house tongs that they use at the bar for lemons, oranges, or anything that they would use in the cherries. Um, but these do not belong in the kitchen. I would like to, I'm pointing out only because they're plastic and I've seen people try to cook with these. So please make sure these go back to the front of the house. And that is it.